Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our virtual live online roadshow with today with Orania Resources. And it's my honor and pleasure to have for you two top presenters today. First of all, we have Dr. Keith Barron, the CEO and Chairman of Orania Resources. Hi, Keith, good to see you. And then we have also Dr. Richard Spencer, who is the president of Orania Resources. And yeah, we have a lot of people here in today. So let me just do some opening remarks here, please. Uh, as you know me all, my name is Jochen Steiger. I'm the founder and CEO of Swiss Resource Capital and also the founder and chief editor of Commodity TV and Rohstoff TV. And uh, yeah, we are starting in one, two minutes. Um, first of all, let me tell you that we are fully complying to Europe European, Swiss and Great Britain data security law. So nobody can see each other and also nobody can see any names or any email addresses. Um, important is really, as we want to have after the approximately 20, 25 minute presentation of the two gentlemen, we want to have a lively Q&A discussion. So please use the chat function as you are used to that already normally and type in your questions and we want to yeah, roast them a little bit after the presentation. <laughs> so let me bring up the presentation. I see 54 people already in here. That is fantastic. Some more will come in and I would suggest... Keith and Richard, the floor is yours. There we go. Take it away, Richard. Yes. Thanks very much for the introduction, Joachim. Um, okay. Well, welcome to, to the Roadshow. Uh, we will be making forward-looking statements, both Keith and, and myself, and, and probably Joachim, for, for that matter. Could happen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just to... To orientate everyone, uh, we're in the just a little bit east of the Andes in, in Ecuador. Um, on the right hand graphic, the Andes are the paler gray that comes down through the sort of central part of the, the, the country and Solgold's Cascavel project is, is in the Andes. Um, Luminous Cangrejos, uh, gold porphyry is there as well. We're a little bit further to the east in a belt that contains uh, Keith's prior discovery, Fruta del Norte, which has been put into production, operating beautifully by Dundin Gold, and uh, also the uh, open pit copper uh, deposit at, at Mirador, in which, uh, with which I was uh, in, involved in the discovery of in the, in the mid-90s. Um, focusing in a little bit more on that area, our very big contiguous concession block, just over 200,000 hectares, and the importance of having a single block uh, of, of concessions is something that I'll come back to in a minute. Um, we're delighted that we have that big block, because if we didn't, we would, we would have some problems. So. There you can see that we lie on geological trend of a whole bunch of copper and, and gold uh, deposits. Uh, the one that's been in the news um, most recently is Warinsa, Solaris' uh, beautiful um, drilling results that are coming out of there is about 15 kilometers to the, um, to the southwest of our concession belt. So we expect that those um, that trend of deposits extends up into into our uh, concession block. Um, I think it's it's crucially important to mention that the management group in Canada is pretty slim. Um, the entire management group in Ecuador is Ecuadorian, except for Jean-Paul Pallier, our, our VPX, who is, is French. Everyone else um, is Ecuadorian, and boy, these guys are absolutely dedicated. Um, when you get out to the field one of these days, you'll see how difficult that environment is, and these guys do an, an absolutely amazing job. In terms of the drilling that we're doing at the, at the moment, um, we have two rigs operating. Um, the one has drilled that sank in N2 and N3. We didn't come up with anything uh, dramatic there. Uh, those are misses and those have been downgraded. Sanken 1 is, uh, we in our press release this morning, uh, we talked about Sanken 1, and I'll be coming back to talk about that in a, in a few minutes. So uh, that drilling is underway today. 
Uh, we're drilling the fourth hole there, um, and uh, we, we expect interesting things to come out of that. The next uh, drilling that that particular drill rig will move on to, there, there are a couple of targets that are waiting in, in the wings to, to, to be drilled there. The second rig is on its way from Kuriyawi, and I'll talk about the drilling uh, results that we've got there um, in, in a few minutes as well. And that rig is being moved up to Tiria Shimpia. And so in, it'll be drilling in a couple of days. And when we're drilling there, we'll be drilling both at Senken in the southeast and Tiria Shimpia in the northwest. And I'll, I'll um, try to illustrate why that is, is crucially important. Now, focusing on where we're drilling, Tiria Shimpia is right on the sort of crest or the, the, the axis of that big concession block. Um, those little red um, squiggles on there are the silver uh, values in, in soil, are showing that it's a very extensive system. It's, uh, it's about 15 kilometers long, and recently we've added another seven, so about 22 kilometers long. Senken N1 is just south of that, and I will be making the case to you that Senken N1 is the same system as Tiria Shimpia. And if that is the case, we have a system that is 45 kilometers long and still open. And then Kuriyawi is down in the uh, lower left, the southwestern part of the concession block. And that whole southwestern area is where we've got a lot of evidence of epithermals and the Kuriyawi drilling was, was aimed at epithermal and underlying porphyry. So that's just to give you a, a feel of where uh, the, the drills will be operating on, on the concession block. Now, this graphic on the left is a plan view that was in this morning's press release. And the red lines are the faults. Now, faults are crucially important in mineralization because they are the things that bring in the hot fluids that have got the metals in them. So all of these deposits are formed by metal bearing fluids coming from somewhere else, coming from a source, which is somewhere else, and trying to get up to an environment where there's some trap, uh, some chemical trap that will pull those metals out of that hot solution. So the faults are the plumbing system that allows the metals to get from the source area of those metals into the deposition site. So the faults are always crucially important. And in fact, um, so north is up in this graphic. So the majority of those faults are, they trend towards the northwest. And that orientation of those northwest trending faults is also a mineral controlling orientation in in, in, in the area to the south of us, in the Cordillera del Condor. So if you look at the porphyries that have been discovered in the Cordillera del Condor, the contiguous belt to the south of us, everyone talks about the importance of these northwest trending corridors. Because if, if, if you look at um, San Carlos Pananza, for, for example, those two porphyries, which are very close together, lie within a fault system that the trends northwest. So we know that this is an important orientation. And just looking at this graphic, the gray stars are the zinc values. The, the stars are outcrop and the little dots are um, blocks of zinc bearing material in, in, in streams. And then Senkin, we're showing again in this, the stars, the outcrops where we have got high grade copper and the dots where we've got blocks in rivers, where those blocks have been carried down the rivers um, from the highland and, and we've found them lower down. And basically we're seeing that the green dots, the copper, go right up to where the zinc is, is starting. And you know, I, I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say, okay, we're dealing with the same fault corridor and Tiria Shimpia has to be the same system as Senken. They, 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 they effectively join. 
So that's looking on the left-hand graphic at, at, at a plan view. If we take a vertical slice across Kyria Shimpia, that is a sediment hosted deposit. The, the, um, the blue is limestone sediments. Um, they would have accumulated in, a, in an environment a, a little bit, bit like the, the, the Bahamas at, uh, at, at the moment with all the, the, the carbonate shelves, shelves there. And then the brown is sandstones and, and shales. And we're seeing that those faults would bring up the hot fluids that, that have the metals in them. That's the plumbing system. And when those faults come into contact with permeable units like sandstones, those metal bearing fluids then move out along those sandstones to form the sediment hosted deposit. That is in the zinc part of the system. If we look at the lower right diagram, that is another vertical slice through Tyria Shimpia. The rocks are a little bit different. These are red beds. And in the blue is where we've, we've drilled uh, the three holes that we, we talked about in the press release this morning. On the left hand side is hole two, in the middle is hole one, and on the right hand side is hole three. And all of those were going through a lava seal. And that seal is just important because those hot metal bearing fluids cannot get through that seal. So the copper mineralization has to be under that seal. So we're fishing under that seal for the copper mineralization and we're seeing an improvement in grade in the amount of uh, copper mineralization that we can see in the core moving to the right hand side of that graphic. Um, we haven't yet got the um, geochem, the, the uh, assay results for hole three on the right hand side there, but we can see from the core that there is more copper in that. We've hit three units. And we will talk about the thickness of those units when the assay grades come, come back uh, relatively shortly. So this is classic sediment hosted copper. And now when we go back to the graphic on the left hand side, we're saying, okay, we've got sediment hosted copper on the bottom side of that, that, that graphic. And then the, those same fault zones. So these, these same red faults that we see in the vertical profile through Senken N1, they're the same faults that we see in controlling the mineralization, the zinc the silver mineralization up in uh, Tiria Shimpia. So hole four, we are proposing to drill just a little bit north of where we're drilling, uh, where we drilled hole three. And the logic is that we need to be moving from this line, which is this profile here, up towards Tiria Shintia, because that's where the, the, the better copper will, will be. Um, so just uh, going on to that concept a, a little bit more, same graphic on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, is um, Gregor Borg's uh, graphic of the Kupferschiefer, where he talks about the zoning or, or how um, you'll go from an area of no copper, so the hematite is the oxidized area that has no copper, you suddenly go across a knife sharp contact into the copper bearing zone, and that grades gradually into a, a, a zone that's um, more um, lead rich and then into zinc and then eventually into iron, which it doesn't have any, any commercial value. So the, the, the scenario that we think that we're dealing with is the Tyria Shimpia is the zinc component of that system. Um, and that as we move and, and that Senken is the copper component of that system. And then in between them, we're going to have an area that, that, that might have a, a bit more lead in it. But the important thing is that we think that in drilling Senken N1 to N3, we've been sort of just looking at this, this uh, um, idealized graphic that comes from the Kupferschiefer um, in, in, in Poland and in the eastern part of Germany. We think that holes one to three are in that area getting really close to this contact where the copper mineralization starts. And we think that hole four will be um, where the higher grade copper is because 
At hole four, we've got a very high grade uh, in copper and silver at very high grade sample from outcropping surface. And the hole is going down to where that sedimentary layer is inclined at, at depth. So we're aiming at that high grade zone. And if we hit high grade in, in hole four at sink in N1, then that will basically confirm that we've, we've, we've crossed this boundary from the red uh, into the copper bearing zone. And then our target would be to continue drilling along the structural corridor um, where all these faults are going up further and further into, into the copper zone, eventually go through the lead zone, and then we'll be drilling up in, in this area anyway. So we've, we've got one rig that will be arriving at Tiria Shimpia shortly, that'll be drilling this target area for the silver zinc. And incidentally, the silver is throughout this whole area. So the, copper, the, the kupfer schiefer, which obviously is a, is a primary copper producer, um, but it's also the biggest silver producer on, on the planet. So the silver is throughout the system. So at Tiria Shimpia, we've got zinc and silver up in this area, which we will be drilling. Um, probably starting, you know, well before the, the, the end of the month. And the drill rig is already turning on hole four, which hopefully is in this area. And then we plan to drill through the copper area and with the other rig through the zinc area. So, you know, we believe that we are standing on the threshold of a major discovery here, 45 kilometers from the southern part of the copper here to the northern part of the zinc here, and it's still open in, in both directions. So, you know, we are here to make big discoveries. And, and you know, I think uh, this is an important fact to, to get across to, to the shareholders who might get a bit frustrated that, you know, we drill a hole and, and we don't get what we're, what, what we're expecting. But the, the bottom line is that we're not drilling a single vein or something like that, where you can see the vein at surface and you step back and, and you drill it and you get good results. Um, but its monetary value at the end of the day is reasonably limited. We are looking for things that will be game changers in the industry. We are looking for massive deposits and we believe that we have one at Tiria Shimpia and now the possibility of Senken being part of the same system as Tiria Shimpia. This means that we are doing what we set out to do. We are looking for massive deposits. And, you know, if, if there are any questions, obviously, I'll be, I try to, to answer them at the end of this. Kuri Yaoi, um, these are two vertical profiles through the mobile MT. The pink is the those are the conductive areas and the blue are the resistive areas uh, we thought that the mobile mt was very clear in showing us what we thought was the porphyry at depth the sort of pineapple shaped thing that would be about a kilometer in diameter that would be conductive because of the metal in it and then in that sort of column that goes from that porphyry, porphyry target towards the pink at surface, which is just clayed from to today's weathering, that's why it's conductive, we thought, okay, that is an epithermal system that is related to the porphyry at depth. We drilled that target and we didn't hit a porphyry at depth. Um, what we did hit was um, a layered sequence of a lavas and um, other volcanic rocks. So we drilled hole eight. This was potentially going through the epithermal up here in the, in the mobile MT and then getting into the porphyry down at the bottom here. And clearly we didn't hit the porphyry. However, we did see indications of epithermal banding in veinlets through a 700 meter vertical, six to 700 meter vertical sequence here. And that is crucially important because epithermals, um, they, there are three classes of epithermals. The one class has mineralization uh, defined in a, 
or constrained to a band that's typically 100, 150 meters thick, high grade, but limited in vertical thickness. The type of epithermal that Fruta del Norte is, uh, it's called an intermediate sulfidation epithermal, that has mineralization of a, a much bigger or deeper band up to about a kilometer. And Fruta del Norte is an absolutely classic example of that kind of deposit. So the fact that we're seeing epithermal textures over a six to 700 uh, meter vertical sequence here says to us that, okay, we are close to an intermediate sulfidation epithermal. We're, we're looking at a Fruta del Norte kind of system. And the vector between these holes one and two, which we drilled a uh, year, 18 months ago, and hole eight told us to keep going, um, going east, uh, going to the, to the right-hand side of this graphic. So we drilled hole eight, uh, so hole nine, um, out, out to the east. We went through the same lava sequence and, and volcanic sequence. And very importantly, we started to hit alteration minerals shown in the yellow and the red is actually silica as well so we hit more silica which is fundamentally important it's one of the characteristics of epithermal and we started to hit this kaolinite and the fact that we are going from the illite which is shown in green through to kaolinite, kaolinite on the right hand side of that graphic that says to us okay you have a geological vector that tells you not, and, and also here we're seeing um, the same epithermal banding over 600 meter vertical depth. So it's these two boreholes are saying you are close to where an epithermal is of intermediate sulfidation um, type, so like Fruta del Norte, and you need to keep going east. What went wrong with the geophysics with the mobile MT? The mobile MT is a response to the electrical characteristics of the rock. There is a lot of math involved in coming up with those red blobs and the blue blobs. And that math depends on a number of assumptions. And quite clearly in this area where the MMT said, well, we should have a big conductor depth here and we should have an epithermal over here. That means, obviously, that not that we've lost faith in mobile MT, not at all, because it is still picking up a big response in this area. What it means is that some of the assumptions that we used in the mathematical modeling were incorrect. So what we need to do is from the core that we've got out of these holes, hole eight and nine, to measure those um, uh, geophysical characteristics and apply that back into the model. Because the geology is telling us, okay, we are close to an intermediate sulfidation epithermal system, uh, so a system like Fruta del Norte, and keep going east. Now, what we need the geophysics to help us is, um, define, and we've, we, we're modeling this back into the geophysics now, is when we say, okay, do we go east on, on, on this particular section, which we're looking at now, or do in fact we go a little bit northeast or a little bit southeast? That's what the geophysics is going to help us to do. So we haven't lost faith in mobile MT. We're just tweaking it. And that tweaking is going to make those, those geophysical models more realistic as, uh, as we go forward. So what we're going to do and what we're busy doing on uh, Kuriyawi at the moment is remodeling the geophysics based on the constraints that's coming out of the geology now. We're taking a break. We're moving the rig from Kuriyawi up to Tiriashimpia. And when we feel that we've got constraint, the right sort of constraint on the geophysics, and we know the actual location of that conductive feature, um, you know, we, we will consider coming back and, uh, and drilling another hole into, into the geophysics target here. Um, so that is, that is the situation the way we see it today. And do we, and, and again, you know, we're working for, for big deposits here, potentially a, um, a, an epithermal sitting over the top or alongside a, a, a porphyry.
On the Peruvian side, I mean, you know, we, we took up, we applied for this big land position in Peru based on the sedimentary copper uh, concept that we were seeing in the Lost Cities project, the, the, the 200,000 hectares uh, in this blue block up, up in the north here. We saw the same geology, the same sort of copper and silver grades coming out of the same rocks in northern Peru. So we, we applied for a, a big concession package there. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of concern about the political situation in Peru with the election being as tight and very close as it is. Um, I believe that there are in the order of 50,000 votes separating um, at Castillo, who's leading uh, from Fujimori, who is, is, is second. Um, Castillo obviously is left wing. Um, he's a, he's a teacher um, born of pretty humble parents, um, and you know he's. I'm, it would appear that um, you know he he has done far better than he ever expected to to do. Um, he had a lot of rhetoric to to start off with, um, you know, uh, talking about uh, pretty radical economic policies. And I think that as he sort of evolved and started to realize, hey, I can actually win this thing, um, he has started to put really serious advisors in, in, in place and he's starting to tone down the, the, the rhetoric. Um, what I just wanted to focus on in this graphic is that you know he has talked about rewriting the constitution the peruvian constitution constitution the reality is that the peruvian congress is dominated by uh, relatively conservative um leaning you know center right uh groups in in peru this is the sort of ruling class, the more um, economically uh, richer um, people in, in general. Um, the poorer people who have been left behind are generally the, the people who are voting for Castillo. Um, and, you know, quite honestly, that's, that's understandable. The ruling class in the past has um, tended to leave the the poorer part of the population behind. Um, there's been a widening gap between the poor and the, and the rich. And I think that, um, you know, this, this election results is democracy saying, hey guys, you know, we, we need to be a little bit more cognizant of what's happening on in the poorer part of the population. So Castillo is big, um, uh, idea is to spend 20 percent of gdp on education and on health i mean you know whether it's going to be 20 percent at the end of the day who knows but you know a person who's focusing on those fundamental issues in society that will help to bring uh, you know close uh, bring more people out of poverty i mean one one absolutely cannot um fault that concept how he does it um that is going to be controlled to a large extent by the right wing and then the center right you know some of those people might vote with castillo on some things but generally they're going to vote with the with the right wing so you know obviously there's a lot of uncertainty in peru um and you know we're, we're not um concerned about it what we're hearing out of peru is that um, you know, the vote on the left wing is is rather a vote against the policies of the, the past more than there are, are a vote for Castillo. But, you know, we'll see how that, that resolves. Ecuador, on the other hand, has a president who was also voted in by a, a very, very narrow margin in both the second, the, the first and the second rounds. He is a person who is extremely wealthy, um, a banker by background. And, you know, his approach in this first month in, in, in office has to been to look at the lower, uh, the, 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 the poorer part of the population, and do exactly the same thing, say, look, you know, we have got to get health out to these people, we have got to get education to everyone. Um, and, you know, in fact, the, the policies are pretty, pretty similar. He is a social, he has a social conscience. And I think in this day and age, um, you know, we as, as exploration companies, as mining companies, we, we have to have the, the same thing. So we are certainly absolutely aligned behind the Ecuadorian government. 
And you know what we're looking for in Peru again, it's going back to we are looking for massive deposits that are going to be there if we're successful for generations. Um, and you know governments will come and go during that that time. And um, you know we will we will work with whatever government is is uh, in in power um, because we're going to be there for longer than the, the than the government is. So just in terms of um, share capital, relatively tight structure still, um, and um, you know about 120 million uh, market cap. Um, and you know our, our contact. I know a lot of you are in contact with with Carolyn. Um, she is our rock, uh, the person who can get hold of either Keith or I wherever we are, and and. Uh, let me tell you, she doesn't give up until we've uh, we've been found. Um, so you know, keep keep the questions going to to her. She's she's an amazing individual, um, and uh, she's patient enough to put up with Keith and I. So please feel free to 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 contact her, and then we'll try and get answers back to you through uh, through through Carolyn. So um, yeah, that's that's it. Uh, Joachim, um, don't know how you want to handle the question. Okay, super. Thank you very much, Richard. So Keith had no chance to say something, maybe now. <laughs> <laughs> Great presentation. Thanks. And uh, also, really, I loved uh, your uh, talking about Peru because uh, I never thought that before that the Congress is still more right and center right. And I think this is something really super important. Um, yeah. Uh, then I have Caroline already in here. Great. And also, if you have questions, of course, in German, please feel free to come to us to Swiss Resource. And we, I also get hold of Keith and Richard. <laughs> okay, super. So let me see. Uh, we have a lot of questions. Uh, before I just screening through it, uh, maybe Richard, you can tell one of the shareholders why you are formal in a suit and tie. Maybe I forgot to tell you. <laughs> Yeah, you, you can't see what I'm wearing under underneath that. So <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> you Fantastic. See, you you seriously. <laughs> yeah. Okay, super. All right. So then let's have a look here. Um there is a question, was the copper intersected in hole three of Zenken N1 sulfide mineralization? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Then so, uh, one investor wants to know. Um how many football fields can fit over 45 kilometers? It's, uh, we have the European uh, football championship going on. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's quite a lot, to be honest. You're okay, totally now much. let's get, let's get really serious. <laughs> what uh, geophysical studies can be conducted to refine targets along 45 kilometer corridor while being able to discern which types of metals you are targeting? Who wants to answer? Um, Keith, yeah, you know, but you know, just shout at me when when you. Want to talk. <laughs> yeah, well, um, you know, there's all kinds of different techniques that we haven't used yet, uh, especially ground techniques. And one of the reasons we haven't been doing a lot of ground surveying is just because of the jungle, and it's it's difficult to put grids in in in, in the areas of jungle. Um, but uh, as we hone in on these places. And, uh, and and get more focused, uh, then, you know, rather than cutting through massive, massive swaths of jungle, uh, you know, this system seems to be maybe three kilometers wide, something like that, but extending, as, as Richard said, for about 40 kilometers uh, in, in like a north-south direction. So that, that's basically giving you a corridor instead of having to uh, really do you know, a very, very large chunk of the concessions, which would be uh, cost prohibitive and, and obviously would take uh, more time than, than we've ever got available. Mm -hmm. so, Joachim, just to add to that and going back to the football question, I, I believe it's 450. <laughs> <laughs> At least um, I would say it's even more, I thought. Yeah, probably, probably more. I'm, I'm assuming that the football field is is 100 meters long, and I'm, I'm 110. Yeah, I don't actually know the answer to that. It might be 80 meters. In, anyway, yeah. um, you know, just going back to the the mobile MT, um, 
We are very encouraged that the mobile MT is able to pick up these flat layers. At Atiria Shimpia, we are mostly looking at flat layers. In Senken, we're looking at, at relatively flat layers as, as well. Um, and, you know, we will be talking about some of the refinements that we've done to the mobile MT based on the feedback that we've got from the drilling. So in that profile that shows the, um, the three drill holes on, on Senken N1, we've put that geology with that lava layer into the geophysical model, and the model looks quite different and looks quite exciting. Um, Ethereum Shimpi are the same thing. Um, we are combining the magnetics, and you know when you work with magnetics around the equator, it's 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 a little bit complicated. So we we've, we've been dealing with some of those complications, and we've also been pushing back, feeding back the geological information to the mobile MT, and and we are getting some quite. Um, some results that make sense with the geology. Um, we are, and, and we're excited about that. We are busy doing exactly the same thing at um, at um, Kuriyawi, and uh, again, so you know, it, it's it sounds ridiculous, but as you feed more geological information into the geophysical model, so those things actually shift around in in, in space. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's all based on on math models at the at the end of the day. So, you know, the the fact that we've we've effectively missed at Kuriyawi, although we've got a very strong geological um, uh, vector, uh, I believe that we will come back and and have a, a much more precise a geophysical um, a target there as mm -hmm. uh, as well. Okay, super. So then there is a investor from uh, London, I think. You have done a great job of discovering several different mineralized areas in your large concession. However, despite lots of drilling, it appears that no economic mineralization has been found. Perhaps this concession only has sub-economic uh, failed mineral systems. In other words, lots of smoke, but no active burning fire. <laughs> You know, yeah. have to give us some time. Yeah. You know, this, this is not people. Yeah. People don't understand. I think a lot of investors don't understand, and 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 this is the age of instant gratification with Bitcoin and all the rest of it. They don't understand. It's an iterative process. Uh, we're learning uh, incredible amounts of of information every time we put a drill hole down. But you know, with the discovery of Fruta del Norte, it was not one drill hole and you hit the jackpot we'd actually drilled about 200 holes and uh it seems like nobody has patience for this kind of stuff anymore but this is the kind of work that has to be done in order to hit the jackpot the chances this is not like throwing darts uh the the chances of of coming up with a large discovery are certainly enhanced with the more information you you have at hand and I might add, uh, Fruta del Norte as well, uh, there was a chargeability and resistivity anomaly just to the east of Fruta del Norte, which the uh, the board of directors of Aurelian was very, very focused on drilling. And we drilled that, and it was a red herring. There was bugger all in it. And the actual deposit was about five, 600 meters to the west uh, underneath the geochemical anomaly, which the board overwhelmingly did not want to drill. <laughs> so, you know, uh, geophysics is not a magic bullet. Geochemistry is not a magic bullet. But when you put these things together and you start getting information from the drilling in the subsurface, then it becomes very, very powerful. And then as, as Richard has been explaining, you get a lot of vectors and you know what direction you should go into next. So as far as, as having a lot of smoke, uh, but no, uh, no actual deposits, uh, people have to realize if we were to take our land package and su superimpose it just on the area to the south of us, we would have five, six economic mines. Uh, we'd have Fruta del Norte, we'd have Mirador, we'd have Mirador Norte, and a whole bunch of other advanced things. 
But they've, those deposits, some of those things have had 20, 25 years work on it. We're trying to condense 20 years worth of activity into two, three, four years here and, and accelerate things as rapidly as we can. And I think we're well on the way here. Remember, when we started this stuff four years ago, this was a completely blank slate. There had been no previous work here. There was no information. And we've come so far since that. Now we've got something. I don't know at the end of the day, maybe we have a world-class copper silver deposit and a world-class lead zinc, lead zinc silver deposit. We don't know yet, but certainly they are very, very big in dimension. And they're going to take some drilling to find the sweet spots in them. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say there's going to be a mine that's 40 kilometers long. But there will be areas in there that are richer than, than other areas. And, um, you know, we, we as we learn how the system performs and how, how it's working, what the geological controls are, we'll be able to narrow and focus in on those hot zones. And, uh, you know, I'm still convinced we're, we're on the cusp of finding some major deposits here. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. Richard would, would echo that, too. Absolutely. And Joachim, just going back to the 450 football fields, um, you, know, I, you know, exploration in this day and age um, with social media and, and so much information around there is a little bit like watching sport. Um, and, you know, um, from, um, you know, we can we can always do better than the, the, the guy on the TV screen. You know, we're always shouting when they, they, they miss and, and that kind of thing. And and. You know, there's good and bad with that. I mean, you know, I, I think two points. The one is that when we miss on a borehole and, you know, the shareholders get frustrated, our frustration is probably 100 times that. <laughs> um, with the advantage that we are getting, as Keith said, huge information out of that, that, that call. So it's not a, a zero and a one. We, we say, okay, we missed on this, but what is, what is this telling us? Uh, um, but, you know, staying with the football analogy a little bit, um, you know, have you got a good team? You need to decide that as to whether you're going to win at the end of the day. You decide mm -hmm. on the team. Our drilling is shots on goal. Um, and we've had shots on goal. We've had a couple of very close shaves. I think that, you know, we'll, we'll see what the results are, the, the assay results from hole three, but we're, we're there. And we believe that, that hole four is, is going to be a shot on goal. And, you know, the, the more shots on goal, in other words, the more drilling that we're doing, the, the, the more chance we've, we've, mm. we've got. Yeah. Absolutely. You've hit the bar a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Now, and also what we really should not forget, you have 208,000 hectares. I mean, this is a monster. And by the way, this is approximately 3,000 times the size of an average Swiss golf course, just to tell you. And uh, <laughs> no, um, but also I think what is really important to say is um, exploration is an adventure, first thing. Second thing is, I think, you get with everything you are doing. It doesn't matter if it's geophysics, MT, drilling, you get so much information out of it that you can narrow more and more and more your information. And I have also the feeling that you are onto something really big. And to be honest, if I look into BHP Bilton or Newmont, Berrigan, all those major companies, they are all searching for such a monster because we are running out of copper. We have a problem in zinc. We are even going down with the production of gold. So this is something which takes time, but I have a good feeling that you will succeed. Definitely. Um, let's come to uh, something different here because what I got also the questions from shareholders upfront was like, hey guys, you are now for copper, gold, silver, zinc, lead, and now also gallium and indium. So wh where is your focus? How do you handle all the, the, those many different type of metals? Well, our focus is to make money for the shareholders. I love to hear <laughs> that as I am one of the shareholders. <laughs> that's uh, that's uppermost in our mind. But yes. um, and, and in terms of focusing, uh, you know, we've we've got a tiger by the tail, uh, both on the copper silver and on the uh, on the zinc silver right now. 
and they both outcrop. And so we're chasing them from outcrop. Uh, as, as Richard said, and you know, this next hole that's going to go uh, on the, uh, on the copper side is, uh, is very, very close to where we had, um, I think maybe our highest value in outcrop. Um, so this is, uh, this is very significant. And, um, you know, and in terms of the, the gold side, we're taking a little bit of a breather. As people know, we have two drills, only two, two drills, but we, um, we're pulling the, the bigger drill off uh, uh, Kiriawi for the time being, and uh, we're going to send it up to, uh, uh, to um, uh, Tyria Shimpia and punch the very first hole into that thing and, and see what we have there. Uh, we know, because we can see it in hillside exposures, that we have a stack system. Now, how far down does this go and how many... Uh, actual stacks, how many units are here? Is it like a stack of pancakes? Uh, <laughs> it could very well be, um, but we won't know until we get some holes in the subsurface here, and it's it'll be very, very exciting. So, you know, the things that are going to be the catalyst, and I think this is the thing that's most important for the shareholders, the, the catalyst in the next little while here will be uh, the copper silver story and, and copper and silver prices have been behaving very well. And the, the zinc silver story. And as you said, um, the world is running out of zinc and zinc is an important thing. It's an important thing in battery, uh, uh battery technology. Um, the main use is actually in, in galvanizing car parks and parts. And we know that uh, the demand for uh, new cars has gone through the roof. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you know these are all these are all great things mm -hmm. here, but uh, you know we're not uh, madly chasing off things in all directions here. I I don't want people to to think uh, that we're doing that. But uh, as we uh, started this investigation four years ago, um, things have popped up which we didn't expect. We didn't expect any sedimentary hosted type of mineralization at all. Uh, we're the very first ones to discover it in, in Ecuador. And, um, you know, it, it, we, we'd be doing a, a real disservice to our shareholders if we didn't uh, uh, follow it up the, the best way possible, because I think that really uh, is the possibility to get an early, early uh, massive discovery here and really okay. change the fortunes of the company. Yeah. And Joachim, if I can just add to, to that, um, you know, I, I think the, the important thing from a discovery point of view and creating value, which is what we're here to do, no one promised to create value out of gallium or copper or anything, it's to create value for the shareholder. Mm. Um, we are looking at systems. Um, so Tyria Shimpia and Senken appears to be one system. Mm -hmm. And geometrically, they're the same thing. They're these, these sort of flattish sheets. So it doesn't mean that, you know, we, we use exactly the same um, concept to drill copper as we do to drill uh, silver zinc. So, uh, you know, the, because it's a different commodity, it doesn't mean that our approach is different. It's one common approach. So we've got one approach for the sedimentary hosted stuff, whether that's copper dominated um, or, or zinc dominated, one system. And then with the porphyries, the porphyries and epithermals are, are generally linked. Fruta del Norte is a classic example. It's, it's got two porphyries cl close to it. So that's another system, if you, if you like. So when we came into this area, we were looking for epithermals and porphyries. And as Keith said, you know, we didn't expect to find the sediment hosted stuff. Um, and, you know, but we still, the, the, the exploration approach is very simple and, and, and similar. We're looking for two types of system. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. super. So this was also probably one of the reasons why you are now changing the drill rig uh, from Kuiyabi to Tiria Shimpia, right? And was also this uh, a reason, as we saw today, like 39% copper and 260 grams of silver? Was that over over uh, a special length? Or how, how did you find it was one of the questions here into the chat also. 
Joachim, that, that sample is taken over about four meters mm -hmm. um, in, in, in our crop. Uh, so it's, it's, it's very significant. And, and you know, this is, the, this is actually, it's a, it's a great question because it puts something in context. That uh, sample was found a while ago, mm -hmm. um, but we didn't understand its context. Um, and it was when we drilled hole three that we realized, hey, you know, we've, we've got that, that lava layer that is the seal, and then we were hitting the copper in the three layers underneath that. And then, you know, we looked a long trend and realized that that high-grade sample is probably an extension geometrically. It looks as though it's an extension of one of those three layers that we hit. And that's when we thought, okay, let's go in. We now understand what the target is. Let's go in under uh, underneath that. And, mm -hmm. you know, it just happens to be in an area where there's not much outcrop. So, you know, that's why we couldn't really get the context of that previously. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, also a question to uh, your theory that uh, Tiria Shimpia and Tenken N1 is all the same system. Um, to what depths do you think this might go down? Um, how much more drilling? And do you have to do more deep drilling into that now? You know, we, we, don't, we don't know how deep it's going to go. Um, we just, you know, if you've got a system that's 45 kilometers long, um, it's logical that it would have a, 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 a deep extension. I mean, you know, what I'm, what I'm saying is you wouldn't have something that's 45 kilometers long and only a hundred meters thick, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, or a hundred meters wide. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Um, 45 kilometers long and a couple of kilometers wide, five kilometers wide. You know, judging from other deposits around the world, you know that's that's the kind of thing that we would we we would expect. So we the bottom line is we don't know, but we we certainly expect it to be a a big system in in depth. So you know, going going back to the question about the drilling, um, you know the the whole uh, four that's that's going down to sink in N one at the at the moment that's likely to go to 200 meters mm -hmm. uh, we we feel that we would have cut that layer in in out that we found an outcrop uh, by 200 meters depending on what we see we might run it a little bit longer um, and then if we hit on that we might decide to drill a deeper hole just to to determine the, the you know the, the extent of 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 that Tyria shimpia as well you know we can see the stuff at surface um, we can see the layers and and stack layers as Keith was saying so, you know, again, we'll start with short holes there. Um, if we have success with a 150, 200 meter hole, we might decide from the same platform just to drill a, a deeper one, just to start, you know, ans answering that question, which is a very good question. Mm -hmm. Okay. You said also in the presentation that you expect like copper under a seal. Can you give us a little bit more context into that? What, what would it mean? Would it mean that uh, you really have to go much, much deeper, but for that, then it's maybe much more copper rich. Um, might it be a problem for a future production if it's under a seal? So can, can you give us a little bit of an explanation, please? Joachim, the, the seal, so the, the, the whole, all of these sedimentary hosted deposits, be it copper or, or lead or zinc or, or whatever, which have all got silver in them, um, those are in hot fluids that are flowing around these, these sedimentary basins. And the basin that we're dealing with is mainly filled with sandy material, red, red sandy material. And a, a sandstone has a, a reasonable amount of permeability in it so that fluid can move through that basin, that metal bearing fluid. But you only form a deposit where you can concentrate that fluid into one place. So you're taking uh, metal from a big area and the best deposits are where you take metal from a big area and you force it into a small place because that's where the grade you, is, is going to be highest. So that lava seal that we're talking about is crucially important because it's like a um, it's like a layer of rubber with within that sandstone. Mm -hmm. Nothing can get through it. Those those hot fluids cannot get through that. 
So it's a lava layer of 75, 80 meters thick. Mm -hmm. And so that means that the copper bearing fluids um, can, will rise, because they're hot, they will rise into the domes in that seal, but they will be stopped there. Okay. So it's a trap so for the concentrated like. So, and, and so we see that, uh, that lava seal right at surface. Mm -hmm. So there it's at, at zero depth. Um, and, you know, we, we're assuming it goes down to about a kilometer depth in, in, in some areas. Mm -hmm. um, but it's important is in stopping, because if you take that same volume of copper and you disperse it in all the sandstone, you, you're never going to have a deposit. You need the seal there to be able to trap that mm -hmm. fluid into a small area. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're drilling just through that, that lava seal the, mm -hmm. the, the whole time. And, yep. you know, that's why we're excited because that's that's exactly where we've seen the, the, the copper. So it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it makes absolutely sense because when it's concentrated, it will be economic, right? Hopefully. Okay. So that was my forward-looking statement. Um, <laughs> so then there is a great question, two great questions, actually. Uh, will the bigger rig going to Kiria Shimpia slow down the work of the 20 holes plan for the area, considering it's less mobile than a lighter rig? And also, the uh, additional question from that shareholder is, how does the N4 IOCG fits in the model? Let's start with the easy question, the last one. Um, the IOCGs don't know at this stage. Um, and that's another case in point where we, as Keith said just now, we, you know, we've got a strong vector for that. We've got from the, MM, the mobile MT got two conductive areas which look as though they might be the center of those, those uh, IOCGs. But we are modeling those uh, with the MMT, with the new, um, you know, with the, the, the input of, of the geology from the drilling in, the, in that area. So we'll have, we'll have a sort of double check on, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, how, how good those, those two target areas look. Um, in terms of the rig size, um, in fact, there was a change yesterday um, where they, uh, so the rig, that is on uh, Senken N1 is a big rig that can go to 1,000, 1,200, 1,500 meters. Um, and we were the, the, the rig from Kuriyawi is the same capacity. Um, but in fact, yesterday the contractor said, look, uh, we have a smaller rig um, available. Let's, let's put that into Tiria Shimpia and the big rig is on standby for you guys. So you know, because we said to them, they were asking, okay, well, what are you going to do about uh, to, uh, about Kuriyawi? Exactly the same question that the investors are asking, the drillers were asking. And we said, look, you know, we, we need a couple of weeks to refine the geophysics and then maybe we'll be drilling back here. So they said, okay, let's leave the big rig there. We won't charge you for it. We, you know, you just have to, uh, you know, make sure it's secure. And we'll bring in a third rig um, to, to drill at, at Tiria Shimpia, one that's smaller still got about 600 meter um, capacity. So it's it's ample for what we need at Tiria Shimpia. And the third rig is on standby if, if we need it. So it's a, it's a fantastic scenario. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Um, also very important questions as we are approaching slowly but surely the end of the session, but I think it's really important and I give it easily 10 minutes more, no problem on that. Um, what is going on with the Lost Cities project? Uh, because uh, I remember, Keith, when we had like three and a half years uh, ago, dinner here, uh, dinner, not lunch, in uh, in St. Gallen, we were talking about, yeah, Lost Cities, and uh, we think we find those old Spanish mines and stuff. And I have several questions here also, in, but it's also on my list. Can you give us a bit of an idea or an update what's going on there? Do you face any problems with the schwa or areas you cannot access? So what's up there? I'm going to let you start answering that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joachim, we, we think that we found an old Spanish mine at actually at Tiria Um You know, it's um, it doesn't look anything spectacular except that uh, it's a caved in area um, it is an excavation um, you know in limestones you very often get caves natural caves 
This could be a natural cave, but I don't think it is for a number of reasons. Um, if you wanted to mine a silver bearing vein and the Spanish were uh, mining veins at, at, at that time in, in, in Mexico, um, they would not have walked past Tiria Shimpia without looking at it. So I don't know whether this is an exploration uh, sort of gallery or, or whether it was a, a producing mine. And, you know, the Tiria Shimpia is like this. It, it's, it's incredibly steep. So any spoil from that mine, if it was a mine, would have just been washed away. You would, you would get no indication of that today whatsoever. Um, it's also in the area where in the LIDAR we've identified um, those roads, um, you know, that are in, in some places are 60 meters wide. Um, you know, you, you walk along those roads, there, there is no question that they're engineered structures. I mean, they've got huge trees a meter in diameter growing out of them, but they, they are not natural. And, you know, these things, those, those roads are along the watersheds, exactly where an engineer today would build them. Um, and they're close to, to that, uh, to that uh, silver area. Um, and, you know, the, the other two areas where Keith and, and, and JP think, uh, or DPX think that Logroño and Sevilla are, um, access from the Schwar is a little bit difficult in those areas. We're making good progress on, on that, though. Sometimes it's two steps forward and one step back. Um, but, you know, we, we will we'll get there. And, uh, you know, in, in the meantime, we're, we're putting a lot of other pieces in, in, in place. So the LIDAR is helping a lot with that, that, that infrastructure that was, the, that was there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then there is a question, what is the shareholder structure, management, institutional, investors, for example, when did the management last increase its shareholding and by how many shares? Can Orania be sold as a whole with this large variety of discovered raw materials? If so, which companies could be the interested parties? I think all the big boys. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, yeah. I think... Um, you know, I, I don't think that there's a major on the planet that will look at a 45 kilometer system and say, I'm not interested. Um, you know, the people that are in our data room are big companies. Uh, the exciting thing about that is that some of them are companies that are not present, uh, not present in Ecuador yet, but they see it as a copper destination. Um, and you know some of those more exotic metals, the gallium and stuff. There's there's a lot of interest by one major in particular in 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 those. Um, so you know I, I think the model that we've always talked about is doing joint ventures. Um, you know asking a major to come in with their money and their know-how um, to 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 help us. But I I think the concept would be that. You know, and, and we're seeing this already. Some of them are interested in the zinc silver. Others are only interested in the copper porphyries. Others are only interested in the sedimentary copper. Um, and, you know, I, I think, and, and the epithomals, I said right at the beginning, the epithomals are sort of confined to one area. The zinc is confined, confined to one area, the sedimentary copper to, to another area. And the porphyries, you know, which tend to be sort of towards the northern part of the concession area, I think it lends itself well to being broken up into four or five different uh, JVs with, with different majors. Keith, uh, sorry, go, go ahead. Well, that's 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 been my uh, my feeling about this project um, really ever since we started to find uh, multi commodity here. Um, it is, you know, owning Arania is like owning five six juniors. That's what it's like. Uh, because we have all these different styles of mineralization that are juxtaposed against each other. And, uh, you know, any one of these things just on its own would be a potential company maker. Um, my, my thought has always been because I, you know, I, I've got the experience behind me with Aurelian. Uh, Aurelian had Ferdinand del Norte, of course, uh, and was bought out by Kinross 100%. But uh, there's a, a, a gold system right now that is being drilled by Lundin Gold as, as we speak, uh, which was found by Aurelian. 
And Ken Ross got that for free. And then uh, London Gold ended up getting it for free. Uh, as Richard said earlier, there are two copper porphyries next to, actually there's three of them, uh, very, very close to Fruta del Norte. Uh, those went for free. And uh, what should have really happened, and had we not had the banking crisis happening at the same time, uh, we would have broken up the company and, and had a copper subsidiary and put those copper porphyries into that subsidiary. And then the shareholders would have got two bites of the apple instead of just getting one. So I do own 42% of the company right now. I am getting diluted over time. Uh, I may choose to put some more money in at some point, but we shall see. Uh, but it is not my objective here to see the whole thing, the whole package go to one company. Uh, if that does happen, they're going to have to pay a hell of a lot of money for us. <laughs> what, what, what share price do you think they ah. have to pay? <laughs> yeah, you'll get me into trouble with the regulators. I'm not going to say. Shall I say it? You can say it, sure. <laughs> I, think 50, I think $50 would be appropriate. Ah, okay. Okay, well, uh, that'll be a point for a discussion at, uh, at the time. I know. But, uh, <laughs> you know... <laughs> Certainly, if we get a nice uh, copper intersection here in the in the coming weeks, and a nice uh, uh, silver zinc uh, dis, um, intersection, more or less at the same time, uh, then the situation is going to very very rapidly change. Mm, absolutely. Have you faced already some interest from larger companies? Meaning, have you had already, let's say, a secret side visit? Well, there's a, nah, yeah, case, if um, we had just, a secret yeah. site visit, I wouldn't be able to tell you about it because it would be secret. <laughs> But we, we do have, uh, we do have majors in the, in the data room and we have signed uh, CAs with, with several companies. Okay. That's very interesting. Super. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just let me see. Uh, one shareholder is suggesting Asteria, Shimpia and Zenken is so large, we can make lost cities as a tourist attraction. <laughs> <laughs> we'll build a roller coaster. <laughs> exactly. Why not? I mean, it could be an idea. <laughs> you can, you, as, as part of the tourist attraction, you'll be able to walk along the old Spanish roads, camp on those roads, which we yeah. do, and uh, you know, see the wildlife and birds and everything from there. So it's, it sounds yeah. good. Yeah, and if you're happy, you find a nugget. Um, so let me see. Okay, uh, one shareholder says it's a slam dunk. Good, like it. That's good. <laughs> Um, that's we have, yeah, super. Then we are through it. Just let me check if there's any new question. No, that's fine. Also, from my list, um, yeah, perfect, guys. Thank you very much, Keith Richard. That was a great presentation, and also, I, I learned a lot today, to be honest. And uh, I have a good feeling that you guys are really onto something really big. We think so. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> Super. Uh, maybe one last question. How many more drill wow. holes do you think you need? Will it be 200 yes. like Aurelian, or do you think you can shorten that a bit? We'll shorten it out by a lot. Super. Yeah, better shorten it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fantastic. So I would suggest you guys keep the drills turning, and we really look forward to some very good news then, hopefully soon. Yeah, that would be great, uh, because uh, the metal prices are fully in your favor, and I have a good feeling, uh, as I always postulated, that this decade is the metals and the commodities decade for sure. And uh, you guys have the right metals the world needs, and uh, it will be Yeah, hopefully then a monster size of a, deposit, uh, of, of a deposit with maybe three, four mines. That would be the right thing for us shareholders. Keith, Richard, thank you very much. All the best. Hope to see you soon. And uh, yeah, maybe we see us in London for Mines and Money because it looks like this event will appear physical. And uh, if not any force wave or whatever uh, strange things will happen, I should be also in London. Maybe you guys too. That would be great to have to, uh, some dinner together and have for sure some drinks. That's really important against COVID. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I think and I hope uh, by that time uh, we are... Yeah, we have much, much more knowledge on how big the system might be. Super. Thanks. All the best. 
and bye bye to both of you and please stay healthy that's the most important thing these days thanks very much Joachim. thank, thank you, you very much bye yeah bye. ladies and gentlemen that was one hour and ten minutes our live virtual roadshow with Aurelia resources you heard it Keith Baring and Richard Spencer I think they gave a fantastic presentation with a lot of geological and technical insight but I think this was really worth to listen to it uh, because uh, we really got a much more understanding now on how this system works and, uh, works and also the thinking of the management uh, this is really important and i really urge you to have some patience i know this world is a fast world and everybody wants to have everything not today but yesterday even better but uh, exploration is an adventure and exploration is very hard work you need a little bit of luck, but first of all, you need to have your information assembled and to make sure that you drill in the right locations. And uh, don't forget, this is 208,000 hectares. This is really big. And I think in the last three years, the company has made a lot of good progress and now I think the density of information is really bringing things together. And I have a very good feeling that this year, next year, uh, we will see that we are really into something really big here. And don't forget, all the metals this world needs, needs also the metals with the security like gold and silver and uh, the, te the technological and e-mobility uh, metals like copper, zinc, lead and also silver are in there. And uh, yeah, I really look forward to the next news releases and the drills going forward. And I really would suggest you uh, you follow us here on this path and we, got, we keep you posted. All the best. Thank you very much. And Please stay healthy and hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching us and see you next week then with Gold Mining on Tuesday 22nd. Bye-bye. Jochen Steiger from Switzerland. All the best.